Hello everybody and welcome back to my corner of the internet. My name is Rob and I still don't have my computer back from the repair center, but I have an idea of a video that should be pretty cool. In front of me here, I have a Dell Latitude laptop. It's a bit old, but a little bit more interesting about this laptop is that I have SolidWorks 2010 installed. And I think it would be pretty cool to do one of my CAD models of the day on SolidWorks 2010. So let's see what it takes. Unfortunately, I don't really have any option of screen recording since this computer is not powerful enough to do that. But I have it projected on this TV over here. Hopefully you can see it. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So I think CAD model of the day for day 49, I think. Uh, let's just do some Pokeballs. I know, pretty simple. But keep in mind, my first version of SOLIDWORKS that I got really serious with was 2015. And of course, I'm used to SOLIDWORKS 2020. This is 2010, so I expect to fight it a little bit. Well, we'll see what happens, but I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new document. You can see this is freshly installed. I get the units and dimension standard, so I'm gonna tell it that I designed an inches uh, dimension standard and see. And see what it gives me. All right, new part document. Okay. And uh, we're in it. So let's start a sketch on the front plane. And do we have, all right, we have SOLIDWORKS search. Oh, there's no command search? Oh no. Let me see. If I search sketch, oh, nothing's coming up. God, I didn't know that. There's search, but there's, oops, error has occurred in the script on this page. Sure. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure what that was. Um, yeah, there doesn't appear to be any command search at all. There's just regular search. So I'm going to have to dig for it. So let me put this push bin here. So I think it's under insert. God, this stinks. <laughs> insert uh, sketch. Let's see. Where is... Oh, I found it. I found it. Uh, okay, let's put that in, and yeah, my sketch picture has the four Pokeballs. I'm gonna see if we can model all four, if it doesn't give me that much problems. But let's get this scaled up. Um, shoot, there's no scale tool. Uh, yeah, usually when you do sketch picture, there's lock aspect ratio, that's there. But there's usually another checkbox that says, enable scale tool, and it allows you to just pull this thing. Wow, I did not know that. Um, well, I, I have a workaround, so... Let's just leave that in there, roll this up, delete this piece of garbage, packager shell object. Um, we'll start another sketch on the front plane and just get a circle there. And I'm just gonna make this, make the Pokeball three inches. Um, also another thing, no auto scale. So whenever you make something smaller, you have to zoom into it. Not, not the worst, but let's do that. All right, so I had the picture way too big. So I have the sketch with a, with a circle on it, and then I have this other one with the sketch picture. And then now I can say, let's make that smaller, and I'll just try and line up that circle with the Pokeball as best as I can. It's pretty close. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, and I think you can put transparency, so if I say user defined, drop the white color, turn transparency up, matching tolerance up, okay, that doesn't really do much of anything. Well, I guess I'll just leave it like that for right now. So I'm just gonna be kind of sketching out the Pokeball here, so yet another sketch. And let's get a line. And I should be able to snap here to here get an arc. Okay, so I'm glad that that's still a thing. So I'm just snapping to that original circle that I have. Um, okay, S key works. That's good. And get a revolve. And that'll get me my ball. Okay, so far so good. All right, it's already, my rotation has already started to go sideways. Do I have rotate about scene floor? Now shoot, I don't see it here. Oh my goodness, 
rotate about scene floor was not introduced till 2013 apparently. So I guess I just gotta live with this. Oh god, it's just rotating everywhere. All right, um, let's get rid of that. Okay, tab to hide doesn't work. All right, well I'll have to right click hide, which is now a pair of glasses rather than the usual eyeball. Honestly, I kind of like the uh, the pair of glasses better. The eyeball is just creepy, man. Um, let's see. So what I'll do is uh, let's just throw down a center line. I think that's a smart idea. Um, turn that into construction and say infinite length. That'll do. And then now this. Let's try and sketch this out. I like can mirror. Hmm, our tangent arc is not lining up. Oh yeah, because it's not a tangent arc. Shoot. Let me get rid of this coincident and that coincident. And it should be able to, there we go, bring that down just a bit. Actually, that needs to snap to the center because it should be concentric with this thing here. All right, let's just throw a, a dimension. Should I get, okay, I, I can get a double dimension and that looks like it's tending towards a quarter of an inch. That with a radius of half an inch, maybe a hair larger, 0. 0.5625. All right, that looks all right. I suppose. Get the line. Make vertical. All right, and I should be able to mirror. And actually, what I can do, I'm thinking of breaking this off as a surface. Oops, that can go. Let's make that vertical. I think I'm going to uh, uh, use split face to split one of the faces and then copy that as a surface. And then... Yeah, and then, and then basically do a surface thicken and that should get us our little indent. All right, so I can see here, this line and this line, you'll be equal. And I'll just make sure it's oversized. Let me just, all right, we'll just put one inch. So it's oversized. Um, select over geometry with, oh, that doesn't work either. Um, all right, yeah, I tried to press T so I could uh, use my selection box over the geometry, but that didn't work. Oh yeah, I think that was added in 2018 actually. But I just selected everything manually. And if I hide my sketch picture away, that's kind of what I got. And actually at this point, I can also put that inner circle. So let's get that, that sketch picture back in there. Put it like that. So it looks like my sketch picture isn't placed perfectly, but that's okay because it's just, uh, it's just a reference. I'm gonna bump that to 0.75. Eh, could be anyone's call actually. Doesn't have to be 100%. Okay, let me hide the sketch picture. And there's our sketch. I can't really see it that well. Okay, so the question is, how do I change the background? So we go to scenes. Yeah, usually there's like a little beach ball up on the top left here and I don't see anything. And so, let's see if you can find something under. Oh, plain white. If I just drag it, will that do it? Lights, camera, and scene, scene. Yeah, whatever, we'll just have to keep on going here. So, um, I don't have my solid bodies folder. So if I do show on the feature, that should come back. If I go to, if I right click and say surfaces, um, yeah, actually I actually need curves, split line, Get that. Oh, I want projection, I want that on this surface. Okay, and this has left me with the unintended side effect of getting the other side of the sphere 
too with the Pokeball thing. Hmm. See how we can take care of that. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, I might just have to do another split line. Yeah, this probably isn't that efficient. Man, this rotation thing's driving me nuts. Um, let's get another sketch on the front plane. And a corner rectangle from here to here. So basically just matching that original sketch. And let's see if I can oops, see if I can split line that. On these. Okay, so we have these split, so. So, can I do delete face? If I can find it. Oh, so let's go to surfaces first. Delete face, delete and patch. Uh oh, ruined everything. Well, actually, I can do the indent and then do the delete and patch to fix everything. Yeah, let's do that. So let me delete this feature. And let's do offset surface. Say offset of zero. So basically all of these. And then in the back, just the middle one. So far, so good. Let's do a thickened cut using that surface offset. All right, so that's how deep it's gonna go. Let's try a sixteenth of an inch towards the inside. All right, and that is precisely what I wanted. And actually, I could stand to make this middle part a little bit thinner, so I, could, I should be able to easily do that by editing this sketch. And actually, what I can do, here, let me get out of here. Do, do, do. Let's edit this sketch, bring that into focus. Actually, I'll put a dimension from here to here, like that. Make it a driven dimension. Click on this, say that this equals, um, excuse me. It's not letting me click the dimension for... Yeah, it doesn't appear to be letting me click the dimension to make it equal to it. I, I guess it must not be a thing. Although I've heard of something like this. Yeah, link values. Uh, shoot, what is this name? So this is D5 at Sketch5. Let me get that name. I've never really used linked values before. Actually, it stands to reason that I don't know how link values work. Let's find out. I know I have to use linked values, but I don't know how to use them. The equations folder. Oh, I guess I could just put it in the equations folder. Let's try that. So I know this is D1 at Sketch 5, this is D5 at Sketch 5. So if I go to Tools, Equations, Add an Equations. This looks way different. Wow. All right. So I say D1 at Sketch 5. Can I say equals D5? I have no clue what I'm doing. Okay. Entered equation in is invalid. Am I missing quotations? Oh, it took it. Okay, so I guess I just needed some quotations. Um, rebuild, possibly? <laughs> error. Ignore error. Alright, so it changed the, the sketch, but the surface offset fails for some reason. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. That's not correct at all. You need this one, and you need this one, and this one. Alright, there, it's fixed itself. That looks way better already. Let me save this. Pokeball. 
All right, so far so good. We're we live in, we live in. And actually, you know, if I just apply the colors, I can, um, I can already get the red one. So let me. Well, actually, I need to put a little more detail on the little button thingy. There is like a little thing that that sticks out. Um, yeah, I'm actually gonna do the same kind of technique where I will. Let's just get a circle like this. And that looks just about right. Say that's 0.6, who knows. It looks right to me. Uh, let's get a split line. I'm gonna split this. Now I have this separated. And I can go to surfaces, offset, like that. And then thicken this in the outside direction and 0.03125, so 32nd of, a, uh, 32nd of an inch. Okay, that looks good. I think I could also stand to chamfer it. Oh wow, well. okay. Mm, can I say, let's try distance, distance. I know with the modern SOLIDWORKS, it actually, there's actually a hold line parameter that will just chamfer until one of the faces is gone, but I don't see that here, so I might just have to enter that manually. 0.03125. Yep, there it is. Okay, that looks swell. I'm gonna save that. And appearances, the entire part. I'll just make the entire part black and just color the other stuff. So if I go here to the beach ball, I'm gonna make these white. This, this, and that. Okay. And this, make that red. And then this, make that white. Hey, hey, it's a Pokeball. Nice. All right, so let's see. Now it's, oh, okay, hello. Um, let's see if a delete face will take care of that. Delete and patch, all right, that worked just fine. Yeah, it was good to wait to do this after the offset. There we go, it's a Pokeball. So let's see if I go to tools, add-ins, let's do a photo view render, uh, or I guess photo works as it's, shown here. So photo works. Can you get a preview window? All right, it's tiny, but it's there. Um, do F to center this up. Oh, that's that's so rad. It has a it has a little Utah teapot there. That is so cool. Well, let me zoom into that. If I zoom in a little bit, there's a little Utah teapot. Yeah, it's a little Utah teapot. That's kind of cool. Um, very shiny. Very quite shiny. Is there anything? Okay, so I have a display thing now. I guess it just appears. I can't tell what any of these colors are. Um, let's actually get the white. It should be this one if I edit. No, that's the black. It doesn't even give you the option to rename them. You just have to kind of trial and error. And let me go to advanced illumination. So this is all the same. Reflectivity, yeah, that's way too much. Let's go down to 0.10. And there's actually, usually I'll turn on blurry reflections because there's not a, not a lot of perfectly reflective surfaces, but they don't give that option here. So that must have been an addition within the past decade. So let's try to yeah, let's try another preview window. So photo works preview window. There's a Utah teapot spinning. All right, the bottom looks pretty good, but the red is just way too shiny. So where's the red? Here we are. Edit. Uh, illumination. Take, take that to 0.10. Photo works preview. Yeah, that's a bit better. The 
the white bit is shiny there. Now let me get the black not as shiny either. Yeah, I feel like all the standard colors are just way too shiny in SolidWorks. I'm always turning them down. There we go. Preview. Alright, not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, can live with that. Let's see if we can do some options. Okay, these are different. Advanced. No. Illumination. Document properties. And I can't set a re resolution. Hmm. Let's see. Well, let's just put this on medium for right now. I have no idea how long this is going to take. <laughs> Indirect illumination quality goes from draft, low, medium, high, photographic, high quality photographic. And then, of course, user defined. All right, well, nothing really helpful, no. Let's just try a final render and see what it does. I'm gonna have to edit it. Render, I guess render to file. Oh, this is where you put the resolution in, all right. Um, can I get a PNG? Yes. Um, now we're gonna not fix that aspect, well, Let's do a one by one. Okay. And width, do 1080 by 1080. That's usually what I save all my stuff as. But I'm gonna have to change that background from gray. Can, cannot figure out how to do it here. Um, okay. Pixels. Um, and now let's go into my, I'll just have it in my downloads folder. Downloads, all right and set that as my first render. Okay, so something that's different is that... Oh wow, that was fast. Probably because I had all the lowest settings. Okay, that is not as bad as I expected. Not bad at all. Yeah, that white is just way too shiny. It just everything's so shiny. So that's the black, that's the bottom white. So color four should be the middle here. Just gonna turn all that down, you know? Reflectivity, go down to 10. And the black, I might just turn that to zero. There we go. Oh, let me center this up. Let's try another render to file. Okay, and it remembers all my settings. That is really nice. Okay. Okay, and that's a, that's a Pokeball. So there's my first image. Um, let's do, let's see, let's do the Ultra Ball next. And I say that because, um, these two have like an extra feature where this is just, you just gotta split up the faces and recolor it. So, yeah, we know, you're done. And actually, let me memorize this view. If I do spacebar, can I say new view? And I sure can. Let's call this view one. So, uh, new view means that if I rotate this around and I click view one, it'll return it back to the exact same place. So we can actually do a comparison of the different Pokeballs when we render it. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, what I'll do at this point, let me hide this, hide. Go back to the sketch. Oh, let's, yeah, let's get this original circle and this original sketch picture. And what I should be able to do is move this. Oh uh, yeah. So this time I'll just move the Ultra Ball in place, which is apparently a different size. So let's. Expand that. Okay. It's a little too big, but that's fine. We're just we're just trying to get in the ballpark, you know. Hide. Um. Let's show the body. Well, actually, let's, let's hide the body again. I just need a sketch on my front plane here. Oh, actually, what I should do. 
because as um, Ultra Balls, as seen from the top, have an H symbol. And the H is for Hyper Ball, and that's what it's called in Japan. But that means I should probably do my split face as seen from the top. But I still need to measure that width anyway. Let me zoom in. I still need to measure this width here. So, yeah, what I'll do, let me start this. Yeah, I, ha I have my sketch started. Just draw a line just from here to here and get an approximate distance, which seems to be converging at half an inch. And the distance from the origin, 1.625 maybe? Yeah, a little more, a little less. And I think that's enough information. I think with this, I can draw the HS scene from the top. So now let's do a top plane view. And this time, let's bring back the actual ball. Okay, that'll that'll work for us. Okay, I'm viewing the bottom. View the top. There we go. And this is actually symmetric. I want to avoid that line. I should have hidden that. That's okay. Just add that after the fact and just hide this random line that I drew because I didn't place it very strictly at all. Don't want to snap to it, it's just not a good idea. Make horizontal. I can turn both of these into construction and now I can put my dimensions so we know that the width of that is 0.5 and from here to here, 0.625. And then the width should be the same as the top there, so 0.5. And that should be enough info. So this is still left kind of loose here. But that's totally fine. So let's say, right click, select chain. And just include this mirror. So that's our first part of the H. Right click, select chain mirror. Alright, that I think that'll work very nicely. And I'll just put an arbitrary dimension that is just larger than the Pokeball itself. And then I can say split line on this face. There we go, that's absolutely perfect. And since this is just a recolor, well, I can do just that. Let's recolor it. Face. And I'll just do I want pure black. I want a little bit lighter than that. HSV. Turn that up a little bit. Alright, that'll do. Let's grab all these faces. And I'll put the push pin down so I can actually get the yellow. Yellow. Alright, and oop. Material uh it's defined with no geom. Oh no. I have to hit X. All right, and then just hide the sketch picture. Hide, and there's our Ultra Ball. Go back to our number one view. PhotoWorks, render to file. Right, this is number two here. Okay, completed. Let's see what that looks like. Nice. Getting a little too shiny for my taste, but you know, I'll just I'll just let it go. Um, what should we do next? Uh, let's do the great ball. So what I'll do is I'll suppress. So that's yeah, I'll suppress these two sketches. Boink, go away. Now we're back to our regular Pokeball. Oh, let me see. And then, their sketch picture, oh, actually I'll hide this away, yep, start with this, show this, and just move this to our great ball, which needs to be a little smaller. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of parallax perspective here. Mm, 
It's a little too big. Yeah. Alright, this is definitely workable. I'm mean, doing a lot better than I expected. Alright, and now with that, at least I can draw this as seen from the front. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. If I just grab a line tool and just kind of trace this, and I'll just kind of close it up. Uh, let's get a center line. Doink. And let's see. Will it be beneficial to get a center line through here? Yeah, looks looks not too bad. Um, select midpoint. A coincident. Right, looks like I gotta define the angle. Luckily, I have this line here. What if I put 50? Oh, that that's perfect. That's looking real good. Except this part is fighting me a little bit. Yeah, this is. I'm probably gonna have to guess a little bit at this. So let me make that perpendicular to the line there. I suppose I can make these perpendicular as well. All right, it's a little bit off, but I think that's because of the, the parallax pretty much. But let's do this. Let's get an angle in there, maybe 25 degrees. Uh, yeah, let's do that. 2.50 and then probably a distance from the origin. Oop, didn't like that. Oh, like to that. 0.875. Yeah, no, I'm just rounding everything. Alright, and we're just one dimension away. And again, just gonna make sure it's just larger than the whole thing. Oh, probably should have mirrored it. Hang on. Edit. Since there's two center lines, if I do select chain, do that, mirror. Yeah, it's way off over here, but that's because the balls turn. Yeah, that's like the best orthographic view I could find on Google Images. Right, so we have that. Now we can hide this and this, and then bring back our solid body. Okay, and now if I go to the split line, yeah, split line is just super helpful in both directions. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm going for here. I broke those faces up, and what I can do now, since it's it kind of has this texture, is just do what I did in the last time, where I just get offset surface with zero like that, and then thicken that surface. Um, but a little more than that. Let's try 0.25. That's too much. 0.125. A. I like it. Then do that again for this one. Yeah, they're there, but I just gotta apply the colors. So let's go ahead and do that. I show this. So yeah, that's kind of like a very almost almost the blue that the highlight is. So, let's do that face. No, oh, not that bright. Not that dark. Hmm, probably have to modify a blue here. And some green. Oh, that's pretty close. I like that. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. And then let's see if we can add an appearance to the feature. There we go. Red. Red. Oh, and I should probably put some fillets on it too. Let me hide that picture away. It's already looking pretty good, but yeah, let's get some fillets. Constant radius, sure. Um, oh, another thing that I notice, um, usually when you click an edge, a little helper toolbar comes up and it's just not here. And I would, I would like to see a preview though. Alright, there it is. There's 625, make that a little smaller. Oh my god, this, this is annoying. Gotta pick every edge. 
I don't like it. It's all part of the same body, so I'm allowed to pick all these edges. I gotta recolor them too, but I'll, I'll do that after adding the second wave of fillets here. Uh oh. It's too big. Alright, that works. All right, clearly, I mean, that, that looks kind of cool, but that's not the, um, not the, not the great ball color, but let me click on this. Control shift C should copy the appearance. Control shift V should paste it. Nope, that doesn't work at all. All right, so I'm just gonna have to go here, find the red that I used. Oh, here it is. Edit, I'm just gonna have to add to this manually. And there's a tiny sliver face in there. All right, looks like it got it all. And there's our great ball. Put that to our one orientation, save, and render to file. Took a bit longer for that one, I felt like, but there it is. Very shiny, well, that's fine. All right, and let's do the master ball, and then we'll just we'll just call it a day for our CAD model of the day for day 49. And that will end with the master ball. So again, can I add this to a, a folder? That'd be pretty nice. Are there no folders? What the? Oh, it's right here, add to new folder. Great, great ball. Well, can add these. Add the other ones to the ultra ball. Just to keep it organized. It's gone. Oh, add to new folder. Okay. And now I should be able to right click on this folder and just suppress it. That brings us back to Pokeball state. That's that is great. No pun intended. Um yeah, that's Again, hide this, and bring this back, bring this, edit the picture, there we go, just bring the master ball in there, make the picture a little smaller, looks pretty good, perfect, so let's get a sketch again on the front plane. And now I should be able to get this all with one feature. So if I get a three point arc, and oh my god, that's like actually perfect. All right, grab a center line, and eventually I will mirror that. Let's focus this up. So the M is not perfectly centered, but that's okay. I'll draw it as best as I can. If you hold down control, you'll stop the snaps from happening. So that apparently works in 2010. Then I want to snap, I'll do it like down here. All right, now I should be able to box the whole thing and say mirror. Yeah, the M is a little bit off, but that's fine. Um, hide, hide, show. Okay, and now, Again with the split line on this face. Oh, it's gonna have another M on the other side, isn't it? Oh, that 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 was accidental, but that that looks pretty cool. I don't know who Team M is, but this would be their Pokeball, I guess. Um, yeah, of course they have one on the other side. Let me see if Delete and Patch can take care of that. All right, I think that worked out perfectly. Oh, yeah, this is. This is correct. And now, uh, to get this, yeah, let me change the colors already. If I do it, change this face, and it's gonna be like a deep purple. Kinda like that, I'll push pin that, and get this face as like a white. That works, and these faces are like a pink. No. 
That looks pretty good. Hmm. All right. That seems to be a little too intense. All right, I'll just leave it like that. Uh, no, I need to X. So before I render this, you notice that in the picture, if I can show it, yeah, this seems to bulge out a little bit. And actually, I should change this to the the more intense pink. Let me do that real quick. Yeah, so this, edit. Yeah, that pink is too subdued. There we go. I could type in the RGB values, but actually, that's pretty close. Pretty close. And color seven. Actually, I can play around with the purple a little bit more. There we go. Not bad. Yeah, but you see that this is bulging out a little bit. And I'll try that. Uh, well, normally I would try that with the dome. Let's see if this has it in here. Pretty sure it does, actually. Except I can't search for it. Usually I search for it because it's one of those buried commands. But if I go to insert, scroll, 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 features, don't, we have it, awesome. Let's see what that wants to do. All right, I think that'll work pretty good. Except, let me make it less extreme of a dome. 0 0.0625, hit okay. Oh, it killed the color. Why'd you do that, SolidWorks? Fine, I'll add it once more. At least I know it's this pink. And there's our master ball. I'll save and hit my space bar, go to view number one, and render it. Render to file. Four. So it's working on it, and yeah, it's completed. And if I go to my folder here, yeah, there's all my Pokeballs. Nice, and now to finish this off, I just have to edit this in paint.net. Yeah, get this a background and some, uh, some text on there. And there we go, we're done. So that was CAD model of the day done in SOLIDWORKS 2010. Overall, I'm astonished about how useful it still is. Although there's a lot of stuff that I missed, you know, it's been a lot of work done to the software over the past 10 years, just to make it a lot more useful. But it still was just easy for me to pick up, even though I've never used this edition of the software before. It looks so different, but it just seems so familiar at the same time really difficult to describe. Yeah, a couple workarounds, a couple things I couldn't figure out, like I couldn't figure out how to get the completely white background, but I think it all worked out here. And um, with that, that's the end of the decade. You all have a great new year, new decade, and I will see you next time, next year.